8, 2011 meeting of the Town Council. Uh, would the clerk please take the roll? Council Chair Sherman? Here. Council Gouvenali? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor Lennon? Councilor Sullivan? Here. Councilor Swift Kayata? Here. Councilor Walsh? Uh, please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Are there any town council reports, correspondence? Anne. I have one thing. Uh, I just received a letter. Uh, I wasn't sure if everybody was aware of this. It's very brief. It's from the Maine Town and City Management Association, and it informs us that Mike McGovern has been accepted as having met the professional development criteria of the MTCMA recertification program. So Mike is now one of the select few certified town or city managers in the state of Maine. Um, and it all goes on to say, uh, echo, I echo the sentiments where it says, the program represents Michael's commitment to public service and professional excellence, and that we should be proud to have him as our manager. So congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, any others? Jim. Uh, just an update. Uh, a couple of meetings ago, the town council approved um, a new um, trial period of uh, communicating to the planning board when the ordinance committee uh, ordinance uh, decides to refer something. So we had the very first um, opportunity at our planning board, which was a week ago, Tuesday night, to present the referral from ordinance to planning. And it was a chance for the full planning board in workshop to hear the reference that the ordinance committee had made to them about two parcels in town that should be looked at in terms of pulling them from our growth area and possibly rezoning. And it was an interesting um, approach, one that um, I think as we do this maybe more often we'll learn, um, learn how that process works, but the entire uh, planning board got a chance to listen to why and ask a few questions, get some clarity around what it is we're asking them to do and understand full well what the process would be for the planning board then to take it under advisement and come back to us with a recommendation. But I think it's a, it was the first time and I think, it's a, it, I think it worked extremely well. And I just wanted to report to the council that this is the first time the ordinance has had to do that. And I think um, you know, part of our overall communication strategy, I think it's, uh, it was, a, it was a, good, um, a good approach. I think the chair of the planning board was particularly interested in making sure that the planning board understood where we were coming from, from the ordinance committee standpoint, and ultimately trying to understand exactly where the town council wishes to go with the effort. So it was a good meeting, and I appreciated the ability to represent the ordinance committee there. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I just uh, thought I would talk uh, <clears throat> briefly about the uh, wonderful event that uh, our town hosted last weekend. Of course, that's the Beach to Beacon race. Uh, it is just amazing to me that we have such an, a, a special event in our town all week long as I was walking the dog early in the morning. Elite runners would be racing by, uh, training or doing their workouts for the race. And to just have world-class athletes in our midst is uh, very special. It's also very special just to see how this community uh, from our police and public works and community volunteers rallies around this event and supports it uh, so wonderfully each year. Uh, and also, it's obviously a very special event for the people who participate in it, especially when you see all of the townspeople lined up along the race course cheering you on. <clears throat> Uh, and when you pass by people you know, it gives you that extra boost of energy to make sure that you uh, look uh, a little bit more energetic than maybe you were feeling just a second ago. Um, what I noticed this year especially were how many family combinations were participating in the race. Uh, David Weatherby, who's been the longtime organizer, had both of his sons, I believe, competing along with his wife. Uh, Matt Rand who is now in college, was the top runner from Cape Elizabeth, and his father, Jeff, was also competing. And then we also had Victoria Poole uh, complete the race uh, uh, again this year, and she was uh, joined by her daughter, Alex, and granddaughter, Charlotte. 
Um, so it's really become a community event and a family event for a lot of folks in the area. And I just wanted to give uh, special recognition to Christine Kuros, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, who uh, was in the wheelchair division and featured in the Portland Press Herald uh, and completed the race uh, beautifully. And uh, we hope to see her compete in the event for many more years to come. Any other? I, I did want to just uh, refer to one uh, other special event that is coming up. Uh, on Sunday, August 21st, uh, the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust is holding the Try for Preservation. It is a triathlon that begins with a swim off of Crescent Beach, which I, to me sounds uh, like a very interesting and cool way to begin a triathlon. Uh, they are expecting about 300 athletes for the event. If you're interested, please visit their website. They can accommodate about 100 more participants. And they're also taking teams. If you don't feel up to doing all three events, you can join with others and uh, compete as a team. And they also, I believe, would be interested in a few more volunteers. Um, Deborah, would you be willing to uh, update us on the elect special election? Absolutely. A week from tomorrow, Tuesday, August 16th, the House District 121 special election will be held. The polls will be at the Cape Elizabeth High School cafeteria, which is right on the first floor, right next to the gymnasium. The gymnasium was not available to us for next Tuesday, so we will be in the cafeteria. The polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. for those that wish to vote absentee <coughs> and or uh, for those that will be away next week. We do have absentee balloting here at Town Hall from 7.30 to 4.00. We're here the rest of the week. Also, I just want to mention for the municipal election in November, November 8th, um, nomination papers are available for council and school board. There are two vacancies on each. They are uh, all three-year terms. And the nomination papers are due in my office no later than Friday, September 9th. So there still is some time for those that wish to take out papers for council and school board to please come see me or call my office. And again, that deadline for nomination papers is Friday, September 9th. That information is and has been on the website for some time now. So also welcome to look there for further information. Uh, thanks, Deborah. Uh, this is the first opportunity this evening for citizens to comment on items that are not on the agenda. If anybody would like to speak to an item that's not on the agenda, please come to the podium and identify yourself. And we'd be happy to hear your comments. Okay. My name is Randy Ballenbach, and um, I wanted to just make some comments about the, um, what, what's going on with the library, the research and the proposed uh, um, new building for the library. I am a pretty frequent library goer, and I would have to say that I view our library as very adequate the way it is. I understand that it needs some work done to it. I mean, when you're in the library, um, they'll talk about temperature differences and water trouble and some things that are going on, which I'm sure needs expensive <coughs> repair. But it's hard for me to imagine that we really truly need a whole new building and more parking. Uh, I've never had trouble parking there. Um, I mean, the, I've never seen the building crowded. It, it certainly seems adequate, but probably need of some updating, which I'm sure would be less expensive than starting over. Um, and it's not just that the economy seems such that that would be you know, sort of an aggressive thing to do. I would also say, even if the economy were rosier and you kind of looked at the stock market today, that I think it does serve the current needs. Um, I also think that the whole way people use libraries is probably changing and will continue to change. I mean, I rarely actually browse the library anymore. I really have to be honest. I use Minerva. I place my order online. I go and I pick it up. And for me, the library could be, uh, you know, kind of a 10-foot box, actually, because I think that's really all I use it for. And I think lots of people use it that way. And certainly, I think a lot of people, as we go forward, m more and more that's how it's going to be used, because there's just a limit as to what any one library holds in terms of bricks and mortar. And yet, Minerva, you can get anything you want, really. Um, and I know that somewhere I read that one of the other reasons uh, the, the uh, committee felt that we needed a new library was also to enable us to do more programming for special activities. And I, I guess I would say that, well, that's for younger kids. I know they do the 
uh, reading programs in there. Um, and even on those days, I've you know, never found the library overwhelmingly crowded or hard to park. But that could really be done anywhere. That doesn't have to be really necessarily tied to a library. We have other spaces that could be used for that. Um, so I would be opposed to building a whole new facility. It, it just seems unnecessary. It seems uh, particularly odd, not odd, but just the time, the things are changing. Things are really evolving. And as we look at borders and what's happening to bricks and mortar and how people use their books, it would just seem unnecessary to me. So thank you for letting me say that. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks. Would anybody else like to comment on an item that's not on tonight's agenda? Okay, thanks again for coming tonight. Uh, we have the town manager's report. Yes, uh, thank you. I'd just like to echo uh, what the council chair said about how everyone comes together for the Beach to Week and uh, you know, all of the groups he mentioned, the fire department, community services, also intimately involved. And the other thing it, I think really important to emphasize is the support we get from other communities. Uh, there's a tremendous, if, if you look at the, the badges on different uniforms, uh, we, get we get support from Gorham, Falmouth, Portland, South Portland. Uh, really, we could never do it without them. Uh, we, we've estimated that including the, the volunteers and those that are paid, the, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the, fire, the fire folks, the public works, or the very few of those, there's about a thousand people all together that are involved in putting on the race. So, you know, pretty significant, but in most, the, the great majority of those are volunteers. So, you know, real, really, really significant. And, uh, appreciate that. Beyond that, would like to uh, especially welcome uh, Meredith uh, Nato uh, to the community as superintendent of schools uh, since the last council <coughs> meeting she began her work full time as the superintendent of schools. She was interim a month ago and uh, she was uh, nice enough to come to our municipal department heads meeting this morning and those that she hadn't met uh, she arranged to have further meetings with and uh, I know she's also reached out to the town councilors uh, for individual meetings and encourage all of you to meet with her. She's a very delightful person and I think will be a, an exceptional superintendent. All right. Thanks, Mike. Uh, next is the review of the minutes from our July 11, 2011 meeting. Is there a motion? Move to accept, please. And a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the, f the next item is a public hearing scheduled for this evening on the Malt and Venice license for Ocean House Pizza. If anybody would like to speak to this uh, uh, license application, you're welcome to come to the podium. Uh, seeing none, I will uh, now close the public hearing. Um, and item 117-2011 is the license for Ocean House Pizza. Is there a motion? Ann. I move that we approve the Malt and Venus license for Ocean House Pizza. Second it. Okay. Any discussion? I just uh, say Bob Bob Geekus, who's the new owner, is, is here and like would like to welcome him to the community, his daughter Christina as well, and look forward to them having a successful business here in Cape Elizabeth. Great. Thank you, Mike. Uh, all right, all those in favor of the motion. It carries unanimously. And and again, welcome. Uh, item number 118, 2011, is the purchasing procedure uh, that's outlined in our materials. Uh, Mike, it might be helpful if you would give uh, the council a brief summary. Uh, thank you, David. The purchasing proce procedure applies to all of the goods and services purchased by the town. Uh, it hasn't been updated in a while. Uh, it, it came to the surface of needing to be updated because we're making more use of municipal credit cards for the purchase of goods, particularly the, for the Portland Headlight Museum. And the, the auditors, when they came, did their preliminary work in April, looked for where's your credit card written policy. And I said, well, it's here and there, and let me put it in the purchasing policy. And so that's why it's uh, proposed to, to be here, and it, it does put guidelines on how they're to be used to make sure we don't run afoul of uh, their proper use. Uh, it also really isn't is intended to set forth that health insurance does need to be bid out, hasn't been done in a long, long time, that engineering services need to be bid out, and both of these are at least once every three years and as often as every, at least once every five years, and as often as every three years. Uh, and it provides for how 
we sell goods, uh, particularly if they're sold to a municipal or school employee, that it not be someone says, I'd like to have that, and they agree on a price, uh, that there needs to be a posting in every department in those minor things that, that we might end up selling so that uh, everyone fair, thinks it's fair and that one and two of the town gets the best price. A lot of housekeeping uh, and a lot of uh, reflection of current procedures. There's, there's a lot of miscellaneous other details in there. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Does anybody have any questions for the manager? Uh, Jessica? Um, I, got a, I have a couple questions, but um, I first want to just point out some misspellings and some type, type errors. Section G, about halfway down, it, it says it all instances. I'm sure it means in all instances. It must be clear what item is being purchased. Just on the second page? Yep. Okay. Okay. Okay, I've got it. And then uh, it says credit cards may not be sued for the purchase. I'm sure it mean, you mean issued. <laughs> issued for the purchase of services. Or is it used? used. Or used. Used, used. Yeah. And? I seem to be getting dyslexic typing. And if I type Bach one more time, T-E-H. <laughs> it's because we have auto corrector. And also in the last section, section 9, D. Uh, on projects with an, I probably meant to say estimated professional service costs. Like yep. Just uh, semantics, sort of. Anyway, um, so those are the little typos I spotted. But I have a question on um, uh, just two questions. Um, once every five years or as often as, he, as every three, what has been our practice? to date so far? Uh, with health insurance, yes. in the time that I've been here, we have never placed it out to bid. OK, so this is it's good. It's a long time. And on down in M, uh, it doesn't appear that we replace our own workers' comp and pro property accident and so forth out. Do we just pay with Maine Municipal? And shouldn't that go out to bid to other entities as well? It, it's a membership-based service. You know, we are members of the risk pool. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, it's, it's being recommended rather than put it out to bid because, some, because with being membership-based, uh, you know, you're part of the pool. Uh, if, if you withdraw from it, you lose the advantages of being part of that pool. And, you know, someone may give you a, an advantage in one year, you know, with a bid, and it may be gone in the second year. For example, they give discounts and refunds for the amount of period you're there. When we, when we for example, we just added the grader, and the cost of which to insure would have been five hundred and four dollars for the year. They waived that fee. You know, they're they're parts of membership. Okay. What we'd like is someone independent to come in and to look to make sure those membership programs are in fact in our best interest. So I, I didn't hear what the first part of that last sentence was. You'd like to have someone come in? Independent, or? an external, independent broker or whatever to review that program, to review the prices we're paying, to review the the coverages and to be sure that one, we're being protected, and two, we're, that the prices appear. Well, that sounds good because it, even though I, I imagine there are benefits with membership, it still would be a good idea to know that it, it's still competitive yep. all the way around. Thank you. Frank? Mike, on the, um, the item as it relates to health insurance, are there any implications for this as it, as it relates to us trying to the schools, trying to go to competitive bid, and if we're going to coordinate with them in any fashion? Yes, I've had discussions with both the former chair of the Health Insurance Review Committee as well as with the superintendent of schools. And our hope is to try to piggyback with the school department. Uh, we're, we're worried if we can do this in time for January 1, 2012, because you really need to make a decision mm -hmm. you know, by early October in order to set up everything to make the changes. Uh, we're going to see how that works in terms of trying to work together to see you know, the, they still have some issues to discuss with their unions, the right. union in particular. And, uh, you know, what I told our department heads today, our PAC committee and the superintendent, that we would like to work with them, but if, if that doesn't work out on January 1, 2013, we'll still, will have gone out to bid prior to that. So we do plan to work with them, but if it doesn't, we're still going out to bid. Okay. Thanks. Jim. Uh, yeah, uh, Michael, in terms of the use of the credit card, uh, do you have a system in place that you're working with uh, t 
to limit the $500 so that as a department head, I have 500, that's it. I can't go spend 750. Um, it looks to me like you've, you're allowing them 500 in the purchase authorization, but they can, with your permission, move it from five to 3,500. That's right. So do you have controls in place on the cards, or are you going to be the person who authorize it to be more than 500, or is it going to be just 500, and how are you going to manage it all? It's the, it, under this policy, any purchase up to 3500 they simply need to send me an email saying, is, will you approve this? And my response is yes okay, or so no. There's really a single account, the town's single account, and these are individual cardholders? They're individual, no, there's individual cardholders, and there's actually a bill we receive for that can be, we know who's keeping track of each card. Okay. All right. And then, um, and it looks like there's a, a rather robust system of, of uh, checks and balances when the bill comes in and the documentation required to match up before right. that's paid. Is this uh, account you're using, are we, uh, are we earning miles or cash back or anything along that line? Uh, since we have some major buying power. The employees are not earning any of those points. I realize that, but I'm just wondering if we as a town, we have an account that... that I don't, have, I think we went for lower interest rate lower rates lower cost of although you know we plan to pay them every month lower cost of the cards themselves okay so I'm we, just curious because it yeah you know I, if I would prefer that we try to stay away from some of that that point right. activity because I think it as we've seen in another recent incident it's subject to abuse yeah I'm just I'm used to a uh, cash back program um, with multiple cards in it the, the rate is pretty low and pretty aggressive um, but I was just curious what you're going to do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, yeah, go ahead. You know, on that, it, it's in the last six months we've really tried to encourage the problem heads to pay, and particularly the Portland head, like to pay for a lot more of their bills, miscellaneous bills with credit cards. So you're getting a float out of that too. Right? We're, we're getting the flow, plus we're, we're issuing a lot fewer checks. But I still, mm -hmm. you know, I, it, it needs to be closely monitored. Uh, yeah. right. Not just for checks, but to see if that really is in, in our best interest. And, you know, ideally, I'd like to pay 90% of our bills electronically and uh, mm -hmm. with use of credit cards and, you know, other types of systems. Well, it puts the burden on the department head to, to make sure they dot all their I's and cross all their T's yeah. if they're going to be using the card. And it's, yeah. a, it's assigned to them. So. And, you know, and we still require all of the paperwork back up to be attached to the credit card bill yeah. so that you can actually see mm -hmm. every item that was purchased. Good. Well, I applaud the effort to really tighten this up because I think it's clearly an, it's something we have to do. Thanks. All right. Uh, if there are no more questions for the manager, would someone be willing to make a motion on the purchasing procedures? Ann. I move that the council accept the proposed amendments to the purchasing procedures. I'll second. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion. Right, thank you. The motion carries. Item number 119-2011 is the Shore Road Pathway update. Uh, the town manager has provided us with a memorandum giving us an update, but I would ask him to summarize the key points for this evening. Yeah, the, the key points, uh, the project is off and running. We've signed the agreement, the project agreement with MDOT which now means we're eligible for the reimbursement of the $729,000 grant. Uh, concurrent with that, we received from SAFE, the Citizen Fundraising Group. Uh, they had indicated there'd be 100,000. It ended up it was $104,500. Uh, we received from Key Bank a sidewalk easement and a temporary construction easement. Uh, we're negotiating, uh, maybe negotiating, sorry. we're having discussions with the owner at Trout Brook that bought the old McDonough home. Uh, for, uh, it was in the original plans for the drainage that's right next to the brook there. We, we need a, a very small little cutout and there's a new property owner. We've met with them, we've met with their attorney and we expect that to be finalized uh, pretty quick. We also did have a meeting, uh, Jim, Maureen, David and myself with the land trust about the, the reduced alternative uh, of trying to save a few of the trees. And we ran into these, not from the land trust, but independently, uh, having heard from the from Maine Department of Transportation, 
uh, these four F provisions that are, uh, that are there that protect conservation-related lands. Uh, there's a provision in the 4F that anything that's publicly owned or that has some sort of public proprietary interest in, like an easement, which we do have over Robinson Woods 1, that if anyone wants to protest the granting of any right on that property, that anyone has standing to challenge that. The uh, MDOT advised us that if that happened, the Shore Road project could get delayed for years. They also used the term indefinitely. So it's, it's my suggestion uh, that you, you approve, as in the council agenda, the acceptance of the sidewalk <coughs> easement from Key Bank, the acceptance of an easement acceptable to the town attorney for the Ponco Brook small piece, and you accept the donation. And that it, I get into this in preparing the agenda, a difficult trying to update you on this SALT issue without getting into the reconsideration, because the rules are provide you can't have reconsideration. But if you want to have some action that acknowledges, or at least some discussion, that, that acknowledges that we have had the discussions with SALT, they, they respectfully listen to them. But you know, in my view, in Maureen's view, Bob's view, uh, it's probably not in the best interest of the town to subject ourselves to the, the 4F provisions by uh, possibly trying to save these few trees that it could jeopardize the, the whole grant if it got delayed too much. Right. Any comments, uh, Frank? What, what specifically triggers the was it 4F um, provisions? It's any acquisition of any property interest in land that has conservation restrictions on it, that is publicly owned, or that the public has a proprietary interest in, such as an easement. So, in layman's term, if we were to put the path, if, if, if SELT were to give us the right to put the path onto, the, onto Robinson Woods 1, yeah. that would trigger this and potentially create indefinite delays. Yes, yeah, SELT and the main coast heritage and trust. Heritage trust. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have questions or comments on that particular issue? My, my sense of, uh, and, and Jim and I were at that meeting. Oh, I'm sorry, Jessica, go ahead. Actually, I, I just had, it's not really related to the, the uh, four, um, the four app though. Well, Something go ahead. Else. Okay. That's okay. I just was wondering, are, the, are the, e the easement procurements that are listed here, are they adding to the cost of, um, to our expense for the path, Has, if, if so? Do we know what those are? No, we, we're, signing, we're having them sign a waiver uh, of, of damages. And it's, you know, we do have a little bit of cost. We agreed, for example, with uh, the private property owner that we would pick up the legal cost for, for looking at it. So we, but, you know, we anticipated that from the beginning. So we do have a small cost. But we're not intending to actually pay for the easement. Okay. Thank you. Jim. Uh, just, I was at this meeting. Um, and I, I think it's uh, since I obviously was one of the folks who had some concern and, and certainly was very uh, articulate about that over the last several meetings, I felt that the, um, the meeting with, the, with SALT was um, very professional and very positive, a lot of good questions. And it appeared from my perspective a willingness to, um, to talk about the possibility of this small modification that had been suggested, um, 4F being a complete a complete change in the discussion. And frankly, if 4F had been around three years ago, and we knew about it three years ago, or for that matter, even knew about it four months ago, some of the discussions and some of the dialogue we've had over the last several months probably wouldn't have happened. Um, again, you know, we even went around about the 4F when you have the landowner the easement holder, and you have the town all in agreement with one another wanting to go forward with that small modification, you still have this unknown factor. And frankly, the path is, uh, is a, a, a real positive for the town, and I would hate to risk that. And that's why I, I'd like to report to, to my colleagues here that I thought the, the meeting that we went to was very positive, and frankly, again, uh, you know, my, my compliments to self being willing to allow us to have that discussion, and I think it was a good give and take. And I would echo Jim's comments. Uh, a lot of the questions really were a genuine, arose out of a genuine interest in the project and making it, want, wanting it to be successful and, and trying to keep things on track. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what we're looking for tonight is a motion 
uh, relating to the three bullet point items on our agenda, but we do need to give the land trust some direction. Uh, the way we left it at the meeting was that the council is going to have the public <coughs> meeting tonight. Uh, the land trust's next board meeting is within the next few weeks, so before their next board meeting, we, we were to let them know whether we wanted them to continue to explore this modified plan or whether we didn't want them to continue to explore it. And I guess I'm just hearing consensus that perhaps the council is now of the mindset that we don't want them to explore this further, given what we learned from MDOT and the 4F provisions. Is that accurately uh, an accurate description of the consensus? Uh, Jessica. I think so. I think so. Also, um, as it turns out from uh, what I had seen, the, the uh, I think it's 220 linear foot um, uh, compromise actually is not going to save what appears to be a significant amount of money. So that's, that's another factor. So is it, I'm not actually seeking a motion, but is the council in general agreement that uh, either Mike or I report back to self that we appreciate their willingness to consider this, but that we don't wish them to consider it further? Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion on the other pieces of the Shore Road Pathway update? I'm uh, Jim. Uh, you know, I move that we accept the Shore Way Path update, uh, which includes the authorization of an acceptance of a sidewalk easement and a temporary construction easement from Key Bank and the Town Council, the acceptance of an easement adjacent to Pond Cove Brook in the form of acceptable to the town attorney and finally that the town accept a hundred and four thousand five hundred dollar donation from safe with its appreciation for its hard work second it motion's been made and seconded any further discussion all those in favor of the motion thank you the motion carries unanimously thank you uh, item number 120-2011 is the future Open Space Committee Progress Report. Uh, I am uh, unfortunately drawing a blank on which council member is a member of FOSS. Right here. <laughs> We've got a couple of this. Uh, all right. The, uh, between the three of you, would, would one of you like to provide us with an update? We all have seen and read the materials, but if there's anything specific you'd like to point us to? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, Jessica. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've, we've uh, provided the status report as per our charge. And uh, of significance is the um, open space definition and also the recommendation by the committee that we not pursue a definition of the word rural. And the reasoning is in, the, is in your uh, report, um, essentially, that the de definition of rural um, uh, is, um, is quite complicated because it involves U.S. Census, rural health, all kinds of state um, uh, definitions and terminology as well, and is basically uh, derived from a numerical density calculation that really does not apply to the town of Cape Elizabeth. So the uh, committee was uh, resounding on their opinion that this be avoided. Okay. So we're bringing it to the council for your pleasure. Thank you, One Frank. One point would be the recommendation to use a consultant on our um, analysis, the cost-benefit analysis is important to note. Okay, thank you. Ann. Uh, I have a question. I just thought of something on that cost-benefit thing. Was CELT going to be, pr didn't CELT do something a year or two ago? I'm asking the three counselors who may be more familiar with this. Didn't they do some cost-benefit analysis, or wasn't there one done in Scarborough that they had yes. picked up, or something that we were going to get from CELT? CELT has provided, I mean, we could, that stuff's public information, we can get it, but, but Chris Franklin has provided um, and actually several of them to us as a basis of comparison, and then having the reviewed those. The cost-benefit analysis. Yes, and having yes. reviewed those, it gave us some basis to make judgments in terms of mm -hmm. the two proposals that came in and which ones were appropriate. I just wanted to make sure whatever had already been done yeah. We might as well pick up that information, too. Mm -hmm. Good point. Any other questions, Jim? Uh, the, um, there was a referral from, um, from the Ordinance Committee to FOSS, and how has that been taken? And um, 
We've embraced it. <laughs> <laughs> what was, I'm sorry, was I didn't hear the question. The question was the, the, ordinance, the ordinance committee's uh, report, how has FOSP handled that or and dealt with Frank it? Is, it? Embracing is the word I hear. Yeah. Well, it, we just received it. Okay. And so um, it wasn't on, the, it was on the agenda at our last meeting that, that we actually received it. Okay. We have not acted upon it yet. Okay, so just, you should describe what it is. Yeah, just, just curious, that's all. Uh, if, if I could ask the town manager to provide yeah, an update. You look at the, in the progress report, there's a work plan yeah. that lists month by month, yeah. and it does show that that is being addressed within the, the framework of the committee within that work plan, right? Different months. I just wanted my colleagues to comment on it, that's all. Just, uh, just looking at it. We've you. incorporated it into our schedule. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Caitlin. Jessica? Yes, and as a reminder, originally FOSS was giving a, given a 12-month uh, time period, and, and two months ago that was extended to uh, yeah. 16 months. Anyway, December 2012. I thought the schedule was very helpful. It yeah. mapped out month by month and uh, gave us an idea as to where this would ultimately end, so yeah, thank you. Great. Yeah. Maureen has been extremely helpful in keeping us on target and creating these kind of structures, and John Green has been a great chairman in keeping us all on task. That's great. Good. That's great. Um, is there a, do we need to accept this report, uh, Jim? I move that we accept the future Open Space Committee progress report as reported by the three councilors who represent us on that. I, s I second. Okay, there's been a motion. It's been seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you, uh, members of FOSS, for all your hard work on this. Uh, item number 121-2011 is the MMA annual ballot for officers. Uh, and I'm wondering if, you, would you be willing to uh, give the council an update on this? Sure. Um, every year, uh, every summer, there uh, is a process in place where interviews take place for new executive committee members and uh, of Maine Municipal Association and also there there are I'm sure I should say uh, applications are reviewed for regular executive committee members and then there are interviews for the vice presidential slot the vice presidential slot uh, that incumbent eventually goes on to automatically become president so it, in essence it is voting for the president for the, the next year after this. So this year's, um, you can see who the nominees are, but uh, the vice president that uh, nominee is a guy named Steve Bunker, who is the chair of selectmen for the town of Farmington. Uh, I know Steve Bunker, he's extremely capable. I've worked with him uh, a number of years on the executive committee. He has substantial public service, as you could see from the biographical details attached to this, so I think he will do a good job. And I know two out of the three uh, director nominees, and I also can endorse them wholeheartedly. The third person I don't know, so, but I'm sure she's been vetted carefully. So I would move that we uh, vote for the slate as presented um, on the voting ballot. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, just a question and would we authorize you to cast the ballot on behalf of the town or do we actually you cast it, I'll, okay we the it has to be signed by all of us okay all right so all of us who are here tonight I okay. know Sarah's not here but okay. that'll do it the signatures will do it okay any further questions or discussion all those in favor of the motion motion carries thank you just, uh, we all have to remember to sign this before we leave tonight then. Item number 122-2011, the surplus policy. The town manager has updated information on proposed amendments to our surplus policy. Uh, Mike, would you be willing to provide us with a summary? Yeah, I'll be very brief. You had discussed this a while ago and uh, we, we got kind of caught up. You'd like to see some hypotheticals and those are, those are on page two. Uh, what I think, I think what really helps is, is the let me try one more time hypothetical, the paragraph. Uh, right now, if you have $10 in annual revenues, it's based on annual revenues, the policy provides that you need to keep 8.83 cents unassigned, or 0.833%. Under the current policy, any amount that you have over 83.3 .3 cents must be returned to the taxpayers. 
Under the proposed policy, any, any amount you have over 83 cents, but not more than 95.45 cents, which is 115 percent of 83.3, must be returned to the taxpayers in the next budget and may not be used for anything else. Any, under the policy, any amount over 95.45 cents could be used for any capital need or unanticipated expenditure or may be pledged in, in an assigned fund for future property tax relief. I mean, back on the first page, in the, in the second paragraph, I mentioned that we, we do have the, the draft audit results for the fiscal year ended uh, June 30, 2011. And we, we ended up, if you take those numbers and you, you look at the, the, the fourth paragraph down, taking a, those results into account, the amount we'll be able to apply to next year's surplus is 320000 Last year, the amount under the policy that we should have done was 700000 Instead, recommended as part of the policy that you try to bridge that so that you didn't use it all at once. Plus, we were doing the, these other paying for the boilers, whatever. If you, with, since it's now 320 for next year, we, we know that already by, by this policy, based on the new end of the old policy. If you hadn't, if you had followed the policy religiously last time, we would have applied 700 to the budget. We wouldn't have had that extra 350, which makes up the 320. And we would have gone from applying 700,000 to this year's budget and having zero for next year's. And that's, you know, why I think it's really important that we have a policy that, that doesn't use it all at once. Because if, if, you, if you did apply, if you had to start next year's budget process knowing you were 700,000 in the whole, plus I, I think I read in the Korea that the, 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 the uh, legislative act just took a couple hundred thousand, we'd be starting this, the budget uh, 900,000 in the whole. Instead, we're, we're starting the municipal budget just 30,000 in the whole from what we did last year under this policy or under the old one. Uh, and we're starting the school budget 200,000 in the whole. So I think it just shows the wisdom of, of changing the policy and uh, you giving it due consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Are there any questions for the town manager? Jessica. Yes. Um, I, I read through this and I read the GASB 54. I I'm uh, certainly very interested in updating our policy. What I would recommend to the council, um, Chairman, is that we um, refer this to a workshop. I would like to look at this even further because there are some other issues with um, that I find a little confusing. And rather than take <laughs> town council meeting time, um, I would like to review those in depth at a workshop. All right. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, how are others feeling about that? Ann? Oh, you start. Yes, Ann. <laughs> yes. Um, I think it might be a good idea to take it to a workshop. Uh, I called Mike because I had a number of questions about it this afternoon, but it is a confusing subject. And so I think if one counselor, if Jessica has asked for more time in a workshop, I, I don't see that waiting a month or two to do this is so pressing that we need to deal with it tonight. So. Jim, I have no have objection a, to her, subject, okay. her suggestion. Do we, do we have you, a Ed. workshop in, do we have room on September's workshop? So, go ahead, Mike. I, I haven't gone over with, with David yet the September topics, but you know, there's been a lot of talk about the library, and I think the council needs to have some time to uh, have some discussion on that. There's the whole issue of fireworks that you might have seen an article in the morning paper of whether or not you want to regulate uh, this sale and the use in Cape Elizabeth, which we're planning to have. Uh, there's possibly an update on some of the, the land use issues, uh, you know, the land trust issues. Uh, there's quite a bit in September. The October meeting, the auditors are coming in to do their annual presentation of the audit. Uh, you, know, there's a bit, you know, this summer, clearly, there hasn't been a whole lot of interest in having a, low, a lot of workshops. So issues are beginning to pile up. Though, Dan, go ahead. I, I think October might be a suitable month for doing it because we'll, we'll have the auditors here. We can ask them any questions we might have. And it seems like it would sort of fit with the topic of that evening's workshop. So thank you. Any other thoughts? That makes sense. Would we have it before the auditors come or um, simultaneously that same evening? What are you thinking in? Frankly, I hadn't thought about it because I'd forgotten that the auditors come in October. I think we could do it before. Uh, you know, I mean, we, that's up yeah, to, it, it, to Mike and the chair to work out. But I mean, we could do it before, see what questions we have, and then ask the auditors if they have 
yeah. you know, what their thoughts are on it, if, if any, uh, and then go back into, you know, voting whatever, or seeing what our consensus is. We don't vote at workshops, but, mm -hmm. or, you know, I think we can do it in any order, but I don't think it's such a pressing issue that we need to get it done in September. So. Yeah. Uh, yes, Mike. Yeah, I, I'm not going to, as I told several counsel, I'm not going to argue against a workshop. And, and in fact, your last instruction was you wanted to discuss this at a workshop again. I just, you know, I, I just want to say, as I look at the events in other places, uh, you know, if you if you know, we just had new bond ratings in the last month, and part of it is is because we we come up with policies like this that that look at the long term and that that don't have the short term fixed rewards that the Congress is so disaster disastrously doing. That is such. Did I get that right? Disastrously. Yes, disastrously doing. And, you know, I, the, the more I've thought about this, you know, I, I understand the need to understand it in the language, and we should have a workshop, but I think it's more important than ever that Cape Elizabeth continue to keep on a sound, steady course, to continue to have adequate surplus funds, and to, to, to not, you know, take advantage of whatever peaks there may be in a way that cripples you in the future. And I, I, one other final point I do want to make is the, the federal government now has the same bond rating as the town of Cape Elizabeth with S and B, a double A plus only. I was as stable, and theirs is negative. So, and uh, let's not tell anybody. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, the stock market's totally overreacting, and uh, yeah. other issues going on. I'll get, I'll get off my soapbox. Like, the Chinese. I mean, but you know what? Well, the Chinese have made this is clear a good, what they think about. Uh, okay. This is a good policy, and I hope the council <laughs> in October gives it favorable consideration. All right, Anne, you had your hand up. I, I just wanted to reassure the manager that I don't have any particular concerns about the new policy. It's not, I'm not trying to, yeah. you know, sabotage this or, or whatever, slow it down or whatever, but I just think if, as a courtesy, if nothing else, if a counselor asks <coughs> us to, since we especially did ask at the last time we talked about it, we said we would discuss it at another workshop. I think it's more appropriate to just discuss it at another workshop. And for what it's worth, I, I echo Jessica's comments, and I had assumed we would be going to another workshop on this, and it seems to me October is fine. So in light of that, I'd like to call the question, and is there a motion? Jessica. I move we revisit the surplus policy updated in October workshop. I'll second that. Thank you, Jessica and Jim. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? It carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, this is the second opportunity for citizens to discuss items not on the agenda, but seeing uh, that there are none in chambers tonight. Uh, do I, is there anything further? Or do I have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. We are adjourned. If anyone does have suggested topics for the September workshop,